When I first heard about the eye clickers, my immediate thought was that show Do You Want to Be a Millionaire when they ask for audience assistance and everyone clicks in and then a bar graph goes up with all the responses and that's exactly what happens with the eye clickers. It seemed like a very fun thing to do and also something to try because I'm always looking for something innovative to do in my um, classes to make it better and for the students and more interesting. It's given me the feedback where I know exactly where the issues are and I alter what I do in class because of it. Right now DePaul has installed the base station. It's a small black box which they've installed in some specific uh, classrooms and uh, all the template files are on the DePaul website. So you have to just download that and it has all the necessary instructions. You can have the flash drive that has the content to get the eye clicker working, either plugged into the base or to the computer, or you can have it on your network drive. You don't have to have it on a flash drive that you have with you. And you just uh, start up the software and put your questions up. As the instructor, you have a clicker that you've kind of registered as the instructor in the class. So you click on A and the question comes up for a minute and they have that time to weigh in their responses and usually you can put five or you can just do um, a true false with just A and B. And then um, you click it again, it stops it, and then you click B and a bar graph immediately pops up on the PowerPoint to show you the responses of the students. So it, it's just a great technology. I've really enjoyed using it. I use the iClicker technology in human sexuality um, in a lot of different ways. And first I should mention, it's the largest class I teach. It has over 80 students in it. So the iClickers provide a wonderful way for everyone to have input into whatever it is we're talking about. Otherwise, all the quiet students, you never know what they're thinking. First, put the question up on the screen and then find out where the students are. And if you see a diversity of responses and there's only one response that's right, then what I'll do is I'll ask the students to take a few minutes to talk to each other and see if we can reach some consensus of opinion about it. And then I'll redo it and you do tend to see, okay, they're starting to get it. And so that's a wonderful way for them to get immediate feedback that maybe they didn't know something. I'm using this in a course called Environmental Chemistry, which is designed for non-majors. I decided to use it uh, with uh, identification, so I know which clicker belongs to which student. So this right away helps me keep track of students' attendance. And also, I can, uh, when they click an answer, I know who's clicking the right, whichever answer. When I see that students are not understanding a concept, I'm getting, I ask a question and I'm not getting too much of a response, then I ask for feedback that basically serves as the foundation for the topic I'm trying to address to see where the problem is, why students are not responding. So I create a question on Word, put it up on the screen, and the students respond and I find out where the issues are that they're having problems with which is why they couldn't answer my initial question. Uh, so I find that extremely helpful for me getting feedback as to why the students are stumbling in class. I think that the eye clickers have a lot of potential and I'm still thinking about different ways that I could use it in the future. I'm really uh, excited and I think I'll advocate use of eye clickers in large classrooms, especially our gateway courses which are general chemistry courses because they are larger classes and those students uh, always complain that chemistry is very hard and abstract so we could really um, see some benefits. The feedback is terrific. It, the feedback does highlight issues that are difficult issues in an area that you're trying to cover. It, it's not a matter of who's not getting it. A difficult issue, there is always somebody that's not getting it, others that are and it allows you to see where those areas are that students are having difficulty with so you can alter what you do and how you conduct class. 
just like anything else, you do have to have a little practice to feel comfortable with it. You don't want to stand in front of the classroom and not know what you're doing. But at the same time, I would say don't be afraid of it. It, it really is pretty simple to grasp.